Hey, this is Phil Simon here with the Huffington Post, and I'm pleased today to be joined once again by Mr. Jordan Rudess of Dream Theater. Jordan, how you doing, bud? I'm doing very well. Just uh, have a little bit of off time between tours. I was just in Asia and Australia and uh, hopping around the world a bit with Dream Theater, and now a few days to uh, recuperate and then back to it. This time we're going to be touring uh, in the U.S. and a couple shows in Canada as well for about five weeks or so. Yeah, you kick off in San Francisco, but you're going to be in New York. And how many dates total, give or take? Uh, I didn't really count, but you know, we play about three in a row, take a day off, play again, and it's five weeks. So, okay. Yeah, so. You guys have an opening act on the U.S. tour, or all you? No, we've been doing these evening with shows. It's a very uh, kind of hefty set. You know, it's about it's three hours, including the little twenty minute intermission that we do. Um, but you know, this, this particular tour features, uh, the images and words album is the 25 year anniversary of images and words. So one of the sets is just delivering all of images and words. And that's been really, really fun. Yeah, so the was, first is more like a catalog set going back and hitting key songs that we, you know, want to play. And the second set is all about images and words. I was watching the 15-minute video on um, YouTube that the band filmed with John Petrucci talking about the album. It's it's amazing to me what uh, how that album how that album is held up. I know it's such a great story, right? I mean, it, that album could have just been bypassed, but Pull Me Under became a big hit, and you know we just have this amazing career. And partly it's because when that album hit, it just hit all around the world and all the different distribution houses picked it up and delivered it to their, uh, you know, retail stores. And it, it kind of laid the groundwork for us to have this amazing international career. You know, certainly there's been a whole lot of work and, you know, to maintain that and to just magnify it. But, uh, you know, the band was very lucky when you think about it to have that, that, that starting place because who who gets that you know mm. it's like an amazing opportunity very lucky yeah this the sets you're doing this time are different than the last tour with the astonishing where you pretty much play that album from beginning to end right right exactly yeah. it's, uh, it's you know very different we kind of we we really enjoyed doing the astonishing i think it was probably our greatest biggest production we've ever done um, but it, you know, it had a limited life form because it was only one album, which we really wanted to do the whole album and put it out there because of the nature of the, you know, concept work. Um, so now we switch gears because it's something really cool to celebrate and just, uh, enjoying running around the planet and doing these shows. I also saw that the novelization of the astonishing has been announced. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. It's, uh, um, we have, uh, wonderful author, uh, Peter O'Rillian doing the, the book. And I think it's coming out pretty soon. He's been working pretty close, closely with John Petrucci, who wrote the story. Um, and uh, I haven't read it yet, but everybody who has says it's a really, really great book. And he's magnified the story and added all the, you know, different elements and kind of brought it together so it could really be, you know, uh, a, a novel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've read about that on social media, and it seems like Dream Theater has been pretty um, evolved when it comes to using social media. I remember back in, what was it, 2007 when Mike Mangini joined the band, and you did the seven auditions, and when you announced that Mike was the new drummer, it was trending on Twitter. Right, right. That was really um, a great... Uh a great thing for us because you know it's not like that whole thing was planned necessarily first of all you know flash backwards to many years ago when portnoy left and it was a confusing time i mean here we are we had this drummer since the beginning of the band all of a sudden he's gone so what to do so it kind of ended up that things worked out first of all we found a really great drummer and second of all we kind of had this idea to do this documentary at the time with over the edge productions and they were really great and uh, just, you know, is one of these things which became, uh, you know, very uh, well, it was watched so many times. It was popular. And uh, and also we ended up with a great player. So, you know, the social media and it also kicked off the whole like social media thing. It was at a time when, you know, um, everybody was just kind of really digging into that and seeing what was possible and you know so so it gave us some information and to this day you know we look at that okay well that was really successful on social media and engagement and all these things so uh we think about that a lot mm -hmm. how to move forward uh and, and 
increase engagement and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Dream Theater is just one of the many hats that you wear. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what's going on with your company, Wisdom Music. I know that you like to experiment with different apps and chachis. <clears throat> Yeah, well, you know, I'm uh, kind of addicted to sound and uh, I love to kind of like explore anything that's going to add expression to my music. Um, wisdom music is uh, is kind of like my big outlet for doing that. Um, these days I work with a wonderful group uh, that I met when I made various visits to Stanford University. Mm -hmm showing them new technology. So I befriended these guys that were all kind of coming out of the Karma uh, labs at Stanford University, which is the audio uh, engineering school. And um, so what ended up happening is that we started to work on this, this uh, technology together, which ended up uh, in the form of my my latest app, GeoShred. GeoShred is uh, is um, it's a big offering. It's probably more than most people even realize. It runs right now on iOS. Uh, it's an instrument. It's an, it's an iOS instrument. But uh, the thing that's amazing uh, about it, and that most people are just starting to pick up on, is that not only is it is an instrument like a self-contained instrument with sounds built into it. It also, um, now with this latest update, it interfaces with the outside world. So you can play on your iPad using all the multi-touch gestures and all the things that oh, are fantastic okay. about that and trigger any sound. So all the kind of pitch intelligence that I've been working on with through all my apps for all these years is now fully like integrated into GeoShred and can play any instrument. So it really opens up uh, all new territory for expression, which is really cool. And there's a lot of guys that are using it like <clears throat> outside of the US in all kinds of interesting musical styles. Hmm. The second biggest market for wisdom music right now is in India. Hmm. You've got guys like Mahesh Raghavan who are posting YouTube videos of like the Game of Thrones theme that uh, he does it in Carnatic style and it's really beautiful. And he can really express it on GeoShred unlike any other instrument that's in the world today because the sliding is so uh, flexible and, uh, and intelligent, really. So there's a whole movement. When I went to India recently with Dream Theater, I made time during the day of the show to get together with all these um, very interesting Indian musicians, some established musicians, some that were uh, newer uh, to, the, to the world of music, just very talented, and I thought really deserved some of my attention. <clears throat> and um, so I met a whole bunch of guys, and uh, one of the people I met is this guy, Navneet Sundar, who's a, uh, <clears throat> also a very established Indian musician. He's doing incredible, like, bending stuff and, you know, making recordings with GeoShred. And really, really interesting uh, to have that open up and to see how people are, how are, people are discovering that. So Wisdom Music has been, you know, a really, really fun thing for me to, uh, you know, put energy behind. And at the same time, you know, I still... Uh, I'm involved with, with uh, some of the other companies doing really cool things. I just posted a video. Actually, I'm working on a sound uh, bank for Roly, the company that makes the Seaboard, which mm. is, uh, for those who don't know, the Seaboard is uh, kind of like the next uh, evolution of the keyboard instrument as we know it. It's an instrument that's based on a keyboard kind of layout, but it's all uh, very fluid. And uh, I think I've got it right over here. So you can kind of see the, <clears throat> see it's all, it looks different, but it does have a shape of a keyboard. And um, so I stay involved with that. And, uh, you know, any, anything that's going to offer me new kinds of expression, I'll check out and be interested in. Certain things stick more than other things, like the seaboard for me is a very uh, important instrument because it offers this kind of next generation kind of expression. So you can play a note and then slide into the note. There's a lot you can do once you, once you, Initially, play the play the note. Um, so yeah, and then actually on on that note, I'm going to be. I was invited to be an artist in residence at Stanford. Uh, oh, congratulations! Here, so uh, in January, I'm basically moving my shop out to uh, out to Karma, and going to be hanging out there for a few months. Um, working out there and interfacing with the students and engaging with everybody and able to kind of uh, move the technology forward and have a, have some fun with everybody. Looking forward to that. And that's before we start on the next um, Dream Theater uh, endeavor, which will start on a new album probably uh, around May or 
June. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> At Stanford, will we be interacting with tech students, musicians, all of the above? Well, Karma is all about is a is a school where they learn all about audio. These are the people who come out of there and they end up working at Pandora or Spotify or uh, Universal uh, Audio or make you know at Korg or they're all the people like the high end mm. you know, people who are going to end up in all these amazing audio companies doing instruments and audio interfaces and you know whatever the next level of uh, you know audio will be in technology. So, uh, and they and they, well, they like me because I'm interested and I've, I've been kind of on the, uh, forefront of, of, you know, using these amazing instruments and I kind of have a vision of w what can happen musically with them. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of what it'll be. So I'll be, <clears throat> I'll be out there talking to them about new instruments. I'll be out there playing, doing some concerts, uh, using their amazing surround sound systems and kind of, uh, you know, immersing myself in their very high tech, uh, interesting audio world. Well, that sounds great. Um, back to GeoShred for a minute. You were telling me about these interesting sounds and to paraphrase one of my favorite Rush songs, show me, don't tell me. Yeah. So, uh, I got it in front of me actually. So this is kind of cool. Uh, this is GeoShred, and I'm going to just play for a second using the sounds uh, that are internal to the instrument. So the drone you hear is actually, I'm not touching anything. Can you see the screen okay? Yes. Pretty good, right? So the drone you hear is because the new version of GeoShred has sympathetic strings in the background. So you, like a sitar, you can actually get the strings to resonate <clears throat> from when you play, they can kind of trigger resonation in the strings, or they can provide a drone on their own. So with this particular patch, and there are many patches, there's this drone going, and then I can play on top of it like this. So you can see, <clears throat> you know, one of the great things about GeoShred and the things that make all the difference is this really intelligent kind of pitch tracking brain. And to put it in more kind of in a Western style, a little bit more of a rock approach, you can play, you know, some notes and get them to even to feed back. And this is just sound out of my iPad. So if I play, let's say. And that's because, and the reason it's uh, feeding back and behaving like that is because this instrument is based on something called physical modeling, hmm. uh, which was actually develop, developed with the help of one of my partners uh, in Wisdom Music, uh, Julia Smith, who's out at Stanford. Um, and the physical model is really, really organic. It allows for, it, it all uses this kind of advanced math to figure out the properties of what makes an instrument really tick to vibrate and what happens when you play a guitar. And this is, and GeoShred is all based internally on the physical modeling of a guitar hmm. so um there's a lot of things that 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 kind of like um are based on the guitar uh physics like feedback or like being able to mute uh strings like right. um and there's a lot of different uh types of sounds in here and every sound, even though they're very different, they're all based on guitar physics. Like this one is cool because let's see if you can see it. Let me make sure. Yeah. So this one, the notes are actually bigger on the screen. And of course, one of the beautiful things about an iPad is that, or a multi-touch surface is that you can configure it any which way. So every patch, literally the notes can be a different size. But with this one, uh, what's amazing is that you press a note, you don't really hear anything, but if you give it some energy and move your finger within mm. the space of the note, it will, it'll kind of like, uh, change the timbre and bring the sound into reality. Then you can use the feedback. And much like a guitar, you also have a whammy slider. 
So you can be bringing in the notes on the note themselves, sliding to other notes, and adding feedback and whammy. So it really, you know, between the fact that um, this instrument is kind of like crossing into other cultures and other music, and also it's so modern in terms of being able to use these new multi-touch devices in this way, it's really, dare I say, kind of changing the, the history of what, what's going on with musical instruments. Because I don't think ever before there was something that was like this powerful that you could buy on a standard device, like your iPhone or you know an iPad. So, and this GeoShred actually also runs on the iPhone beautifully. And actually on the iPhone, it takes advantage of the 3D touch. Hmm. So you can actually press into the notes and get various timbral changes when you're pressing into the screen, which is, uh, which is so awesome. Oh, that's great. Uh, you, when you were playing GeoShred, some of the music did sound like it had an Indian influence. And I know that relates to one of your side projects. Can you talk a little bit about Light Becomes Day? Yeah, I was actually just in Dubai and I met with my partner on Life Becomes Day, Mahesh Raghavan. Um, so what happened was that when GeoShreds first started to uh, kind of come alive in India and I was getting emails every day and messages from all these Indian musicians, I discovered um, this wonderful guy that I've been talking about, Mahesh, and he was doing these uh, really highly watched uh, videos taking uh, popular songs like the theme from Game of Thrones and turning them into a Carnatic kind of uh, arrangement. So I was watching him get like millions of views with all this stuff and playing GeoShred. And, and I was excited from a you know company point of view, like, wow, my Wisdom Music app is getting all these hits with this guy playing it. But I was also just interested musically in this person's you know musical output and his talent. And so I thought that wouldn't it be great if I reached out to him instead of doing like, you know, kind of you know, a pop song, like a Justin Bieber song or whatever, that let's, let's do something like original, kind of more my style. So I told him I'd like to write something uh, and maybe he would, you know, join me on this and we could both play GeoShred, but I could do it from my kind of more Western style and he could do it from, in his Carnatic style. We could both express the melodies in different ways. So he was really interested. And when I told him that, he was excited about it. And I remember getting off the phone with him. And as soon as I got off the phone with him, I had the, it flashed into my head the tune, what I wanted it to be. And about five minutes after hanging up the phone and him saying I'm really into it, I sent him like a piano version of the main part of the song. <clears throat> so the whole thing was very inspired. So then we started to talk about it and work on it. And I, and I, and I finished writing the song. And during the process, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to get like some other musicians in on this? You know, besides just the two of us and sequencers and doing it with our computers. So uh, the first thought was to get a uh, percussion. And we decided to go for um, not a standard percussionist, but somebody who does the conical kind of singing. Hmm. That's the Takadimi type of stuff they do with their mouth, almost like Indian beatboxing. Hmm. And it's awesome when people watch Light Becomes Day, they can see this guy, um, B.C. Manjunath is his name, and he is one of the very top conical artists in India today. And he was kind enough to offer his talents on our, our uh, fusion, Light Becomes Day. So he was one of the people we used. And then after he agreed, I thought, I like playing bass on my synthesizers. I've always enjoyed, you know, kind of like writing bass lines and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be amazing to get somebody who could really play the the, uh, the, the bass guitar on this? <clears throat> so just so happened a couple of weeks ago, one of the uh, communications I got from India, and of which there were many, was a video of a band, very good band, doing some cool stuff. Um, but I happened to really notice the bass player in the project. And... Uh, so I wrote back to the person who sent me the video. I said, this is awesome. I said, who's your bass player? And they would said to me, oh, this is Mohini Day. This is a, a, a female, 20 years old, you know, big talent out of India. Went, wow, she's amazing. So I wrote to her. Didn't hear back for like a week. And I thought, well, she's just not interested. Then I heard from somebody else that she was out on the road with A.R. Rahman, who's the big Indian film composer. who's kind of a friend of mine, uh, and I wrote to A.R. Rahman, I said, oh, 
are you out with the Mohini day? And anyway, next thing you know, Mohini wrote to me, I'm so sorry, I did get your email. I'm so interested to do it, would love to do it. I've just been really busy traveling around and it's the first chance I had to sit at my computer. So uh, anyway, so that's, that's what happened. So it's this really, really fun, really, I think, great collaboration between me and, uh, and these other artists, uh, Indian artists. Mahesh happens to live in Dubai. Um, BC and, and Mohini live in India, although they're on tour a lot. Uh, and I think it's pretty much the first, you know, collaboration of men. I really look forward to doing more because I really have a lot of respect, admiration for the for the Indian music culture. I think there's mm. so much there. It's so powerful and it's been so untapped or not, not really even understood by Western artists because it takes a lot of uh, learning, education to even put our ears and our mind into into all of that foundation that they have there with their music culture. So um, one of the things that I really enjoyed on this recent trip to Dubai is that I sat uh, with Mahesh Raghavan and he gave me a Carnatic music lesson, hmm. which was awesome. And we made a couple of geo shred patches also and taught me some of the inflections and the phrasing. Because to me, I mean, like, you know, as someone who plays a lot of leads, like on my synthesizers and just enjoys wailing a good lead, learning a new technique on my t to do pitch bending is awesome. Hmm. Like to, to, to incorporate, you know, anything like when I first heard like Jeff Beck, or Steve Vai, or Jimi Hendrix. You know, you listen and you go, wow, okay. And you try to incorporate that into your own style to make it that much cooler. But, you know, you think about Indian music and the way they inflect pitches. If I could get some of that, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who's always been interested in the fusion of elements. So this to me was like, you know, an incredible opportunity to bring in these other influences. I know Light Becomes Day is just one of your collaborations. Do you have another one you want to tell us about? Yeah, I'm uh, really excited because uh, just final. I, I just actually sent back a whole bunch of signed uh, signed CDs because pretty soon there's going to be an official announcement uh, about a new album that I've done uh, with a, a partner of mine. His name is Steve Horlick, who's a um, fantastic um, synthesis, electronic musician. Hmm. And the album is a duo album. It's called Intersonic, all hmm. one word. Intersonic, and it's out on the Lazy Bones uh, record label, which is the same label I've done the Eleven Minim and Rudis stuff. Mm -hmm. Two albums with um, Scott Shore, who runs that label, and he was really interested in this music, which is totally different than anything he's done. Uh, and I haven't really released much music like this. It's a real combination between Stephen Wilson kind of put it best in that it's somewhere between like Autiker. Uh, and like what like Ryuchi Sakamoto does with with electronic musicians, where he plays piano and then there's spacey sounds and stuff mm. all around it. So it's uh, it's it's a mixture of electronic uh, and ambient. It goes everywhere from playing really really gentle piano to with these these floating sounds around it to really kind of more aggressive synthesizer timbres that are just like almost in the in the world of like Aphex Twin or Morton Sabotnik or something like that. So. Um, so yeah, Intersonic, it's going to be, uh, I guess you're, you're like the first journalist I've really spoken to about it, um, but we're super excited about it. I think, I think it came out really beautifully, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be announced soon. Well, as usual, you have no shortage of things going on. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of cool things going on, a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I'm always, always uh, I was talking to somebody about that yesterday, when they were talking about this video I just posted of me with the seaboard and playing all these sounds and they were like, oh, you know, you're doing so many things. And I was like, yeah, but for me, it's like, you know, I'm sitting at home or whatever. I may, I might be technically off, but <clears throat> all of a sudden I think, you know what? I want to go play my seaboard. So I want to like explore those sounds. So I turn on the video camera, you know, and I capture it because it's just fun to, you know, at this point it's so easy to get, you have your iPhone there or whatever you can share, you know, get stuff onto social media without any problem. So uh, I'm, I'm just inspired by the musical instruments. I get inspired by the technology. And I'm also inspired by the sharing, uh, the ability to share so easily <clears throat> with this incredible international community that I've developed over the, over the last years. You know, and even things like, you know, I'm hanging out at home and I just want to go sit at my Steinway, play the piano. I'm like, well, uh, 
there's no reason not to share this. You know, I'm going to play, I'm going to heal myself with the, with the piano and kind of just get in a mood and why not turn the camera on and just kind of have a bit of a party and put it out there for everybody else to enjoy hopefully as well. So, um, that to me is one of the great pleasures of this kind of like technology world that we live in the ability to take what I've been, you know, kind of like practicing and learning for all these years and to put it out there and to create a resonance and a feedback loop very much like what you get when you're playing a live show. Only this time I can sit in the, in the quiet and peace of my own house and, and share from that kind of, uh, you know, point of view. So uh, it's great that you're so passionate about what you're doing and you're continuing to push the boundaries. It's, you know, the, the joy, the smile on your face. I mean, how many people can feel that way about what they do? Mm. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, it's all about the music for me. And luckily or unluckily, I've never been that good at doing anything else. So <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me nicely focused on this one path, you know. Yeah, well, good stuff. Well, Jordan, I look forward to seeing you on, you on tour and I appreciate your taking the time. Well, great. I appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much, Bill. All right.